The crossbow cannibal, three murders within a year. It certainly isn't going to enhance the quality of the evidence. Humanity is not merely a biological condition, but a state of mind. On that basis, I'm a fraud of a human being at best, a demon at worst. These are the words of the famous crossbow cannibal Stephen Griffiths. He was a British cannibalistic serial killer who stalked and terrorized his victims. His brutal acts left many horrified with the thought as to why he could commit such hideous crimes. So let's take a deeper look into the full story behind Stephen Griffiths to uncover how he came to be this wicked and monstrous person. Stephen Sean Griffiths, better known as the Crossbow Cannibal, is a British stalker and executor. Born on December 24, 1969, he was the first child of Stephen Griffiths, a frozen food salesman, and Moira Dewhurst, a telephonist. However, secretly, his mother Moira was a con artist. Later on in her life, she was convicted of fraud. These convictions led to his parents' divorce when Griffiths was only a 13-year-old boy. Even though the mother had a criminal record, Griffiths and his siblings were left in her custody. However, life was not that interesting for Griffiths. He had already developed a weird and disturbing habit of watching his mother having intimate relations with multiple men in their garden at home. His criminal career began when he was still a young boy, being caught shoplifting multiple times. On one occasion, when a clerk tried to stop him from shoplifting, he inflicted serious injuries to her face with a knife he had carried around with him. Because of the attack, he was later arrested and was given three years in youth custody. At this stage of his life, he was only 17 years old. While he was in prison, he lost all contact with his family. Even more disturbing, he told his probation officers and psychiatrists that he would sometimes fantasize about becoming a serial killer. In 1991, he was diagnosed as a schizoid psychopath. After serving a year in custody, Griffiths was released. He moved on to live in a flat located in Manningham, where he then enrolled in psychology at Bradford College. Later on in 1989, Griffiths was caught with an air pistol in his possession and was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. He mentioned that he would use the air pistol to shoot birds, which he would later on dissect. Creepy, right? Not more than a year later, he was once again arrested, but this time it was far worse. He threatened a girl with a knife. For this assault, he served two years in prison. Shortly after his release, he started collecting many books on serial killers. His intentions were to deeply study them, understand them, and learn their ways. Like any book reader, he had his favorites, which he would put all his focus on. They were Jack the Ripper, the Moors Murderers, the Acid Bath Murderer, and the Yorkshire Rippers. All gruesome stories and extremely horrific individuals. In 1998, Griffiths got involved in a relationship with a woman. However, the relationship only lasted for two years. It sadly came to an end when Griffiths invited her to his flat. Once she entered, she was horrified, seeing that every single surface in his apartment was covered in plastic. She refused to stay and immediately left. That same day, she decided to end the relationship. Griffiths went on and tried to date another woman. That relationship as well came to an end as Griffiths became very abusive towards her. After being dumped twice, Griffiths' anger and hatred grew stronger. He started stalking and harassing the woman even after knowing that she would be the mother of his child. That did not seem to bother him. Due to the abuse and injuries she endured, she sadly suffered a miscarriage. As the time passed, Griffith started to indulge in heavy drinking and drug abuse in 2001. The people who lived around him also started noticing his very strange behaviors. One of his neighbors, Rachel Farrington, reported that she saw him feeding live rats to his pet lizards when she was invited to Griffith's apartment. His former friend Billy Parkin also stated he once saw Griffiths consuming a baby rat alive. 
After Griffiths pursued psychology, he finally earned his bachelor's degree in 2003. He then enrolled at the University of Bradford for a PhD later that year. He was unemployed and would mostly spend his time on the internet. He loved downloading pornography and mostly the violent type. His unhealthy daily habits and routines affected him more over time. When his urges became too strong, he finally gave in to them and began his execution spree. His main targets were prostitutes who were in the Bradford area. So on June 22, 2009, Griffiths committed his first official execution to a prostitute named Susan Rushworth. Griffiths lured her into his flat where he then executed her. He moved her body into the bathtub and proceeded to dismember her, consuming bits of her in between. The following year, Griffiths had two more executions. The second victim was Shelley Armitage, who disappeared around April 2010. The third and last victim was Suzanne Blamiers, executed a month later. During the time Griffiths was attacking her, she managed to escape and ran as fast as she could down the hallway of his apartment building. Unfortunately, he caught up to her and captured her once again. He shot her with one of his crossbows and inflicted further wounds on her with a knife. He did all this so casually. Straight away, I think she's twigged that, you know, the summer is dangerous. Not bothered if anyone saw him or not. Luckily, it was all caught on a CCTV camera installed in the hallway of his building. The CCTV captured the entire event, including the part where Griffiths directly looked into the CCTV camera and pointed his middle finger to whoever's watching. This evidence was later used to arrest him. When he was taken to court, Griffiths gave himself the name Crossbow Cannibal, which later caught on as his official serial killer nickname. He pleaded guilty to all three executions and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Are you, are you saying that you killed Susan Rushworth? Yes. And what was the other name? Shelley Armitage. While in prison, Griffiths attempted suicide several times. His first attempt was when he was on a two-month hunger strike, during which he avoided contact with other people. His second attempt was when he pulled a plastic bag over his head and tied the bottom of the bag with his socks, trying to suffocate himself. One of the officers got a glimpse of him on the monitor and rushed to the cell where he found him unconscious. But he quickly recovered after the bag was pulled free. Both of Griffith's suicidal attempts failed. It is believed that there were more than three victims. During the time of his arrest and questioning by the police, he was unclear about the number of victims he had executed. Instead, he stated that he had killed loads. The police are still trying to connect him to the other women who have mysteriously disappeared from the area of Bradford, West Yorkshire, England, near his apartment. When he was looking for his next victim, he would walk around Bradford's red light district in the middle of the night in search of prostitutes. He would then lure them back to his flat, where he then executed them. Apart from his last known victim, it is only assumed that he would execute the others by fatally shooting them with one of his crossbows. As if that was not enough, he found pleasure in dismembering them and even saved some of the body parts, which he would later cook and consume. Sometimes he would even eat them raw during the time of dismemberment. As for the remaining parts, he would place them in a plastic bag, which he then disposed of in a nearby lake. This was discovered when CCTV footage caught him walking out of his apartment with a loaded backpack and other bags. He dumped a victim's body parts in the river air, which were later identified as the body of Suzanne Blamiers. Police found 81 pieces of one victim in this river. When you arrived, what did you actually see here then? You could quite clearly see what looked to be a head. To think, for all these years, his acts went unnoticed by any of his neighbors. During the time of his previous arrests, it was discovered that Griffiths most certainly suffered from further unspecified personality disorders. 
According to criminologists, Griffiths was a sexist and narcissistic individual who was just looking for that moment of fame and attention. Those who knew him said he frequently had very psychopathic and short-tempered behavior towards others. On December 21, 2010, Griffiths was convicted of all three murders after pleading guilty. At Leeds Crown Court the same day, Mr. Justice Openshaw sentenced Griffiths to life imprisonment with a whole life order, meaning he will not become eligible for parole and is likely to spend the rest of his life in prison. What are your thoughts on this case? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to get updates on more thrilling videos. Thanks for watching.